Welcome back, section 2.3, atomic positions and bond orientations. So here we'll uh, look at, uh, again, uh, solid state uh, materials versus other crystals, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, atomic position and MOSFETs to motivate the rest of the course. All right, so all of these uh, semiconductors that I just mentioned in the previous section uh, build this Lego-like toolbox, and they are solid state materials, meaning they have stable solid uh, bonds, the uh, specific positions, the atoms don't move around freely, and the bonding has specific orientation. So that's one class of crystal, it's called solid crystal, and this is the uh, solid state devices that we're typically dealing with. There are other crystals, like plastic crystals, which have specific positions of the atoms, but random orientations of the bonds. Well, we're not going to deal with that in the course here. There's uh, obviously also liquid crystals that you uh, have in liquid uh, crystal displays. They have random positions of the atoms, but specific uh, orientation of the bonding. And then uh, the ultimate limit of, of no specific positions and different uh, bonding directions is, of course, a liquid. And as I mentioned, really in this course, we really focus on uh, solid state crystals where we have specific crystal uh, orientations or atomic positions and bonding orientations. So we deal with solid state, and that's the name of the course. All right, why do we do that? Well, here's a typical example of a uh, silicon MOSFET. It's actually kind of an old MOSFET. But what you see at the bottom here is a substrate, um, and that is uh, very crystalline. It's one of the purest materials you can even imagine. And um, on top of that, on the very top, you have something uh, polycrystalline silicon. There you have uh, small crystal segments that are uh, a lot, not perfectly aligned with each other in a long range. And uh, that is why they're called polycrystal, because there is multiple uh, crystallites, so to speak, in it. And then in between, you have amorphous uh, oxides, typically silicon dioxide, as indicated here, very thin, 16 angstroms is 1.6 nanometers, so it's a very thin uh, oxide. And why would you do that? Well, on the bottom you have very highly conductive uh, electron transport materials. That's the, the core, where the core business of the, the transport of in devices happens. On the top, the, that material is conductive, it's not as conductive as the, uh, the uh, and controllable as the uh, uh, semiconductor material on the bottom. It holds charge, and it may not just be polycrystalline silicon, it may be also metals, and th these are clearly uh, very conductive, uh, but you can't modulate the conductivity in, in such materials very easily. And then you're separated by a material that is not conductive. Supposedly there's no transport, and we'll learn a little bit more about how still some transport can happen. And all of that puts it together. On the bottom you have a semiconductor, then you have a dielectric, and on top you have a conductor of polysilicon and a metal. And that is really a stack of a typical MOSFET in uh, real devices. We also call this top the gate and the bottom device. So those are some of the nomenclature terms that we'll use throughout the course. And we'll use this sort of as a guidance throughout the course to, to begin to understand um, electron transport. Um, the device segment, as I mentioned, is a perfectly arranged crystal. And uh, we'll work from here on the, from these concepts and, uh, and expand those into other materials, uh, transfer these concepts into other crystals and, and maybe more novel materials that are more on the research front. Um, and we'll deal with crystals in the next segment of the course. And there we'll start learning about 1D, 2D, and 3D representations of such crystals. And we want to understand how these crystalline structures ultimately impact the performance of these semiconductors. So that wraps up this uh, section two on materials, where we talked about typical materials, we talked about applications, and now just about positions and uh, bond orientations and motivated uh, the next section, which we'll be dealing with crystals. Thank you.